events. My name is Candace Davis. I am the Director of Event Programming and Creative Services here at VFairs. And today's podcast guest, I'm very, uh, very excited to have Erin Chapman. She's the founder and CEO of Triple A Studios, and she does amazing things within our events industry. And I want her to tell you firsthand how she got into this industry and what she does and what her day-to-day -day looks like as she is a world traveler. Um, doing events and producing events all around the world. So, Erin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, Candice. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. You know, one of our mutual friends who works in the industry, too, said, I think, you know, Erin, you need to be on the podcast. And I said, yes, please, let, let's meet Erin, you know, and yeah. we clicked uh, immediately. And I love the background that you talked about, which I want you to tell our guests as well how you got into this industry and how really it's in your DNA um, <laughs> for both of your parents, you know, doing all the things that, that they did that kind of led up to you uh, taking the industry full force and getting to events and event production. Also love a side note um, that you can talk, you know, AV and I always love to, to talk to other, you know, ladies out there about um, the AV needs and we can talk it too. Go you know? girls. So, we can't, you know? Yeah. Um, thanks again for being on. And let's just start from the top. Tell us where you're located in the world and what you do at AAA Studios. Awesome. Well, first, I'm so excited to be here. And yeah, shout out to the other tech girls out there. You know, yeah. we got to stand together. That's right. Um, so I'm, uh, we're based in New York City. I'm born and raised in New York City. Um, we're in what I call the upstate Manhattan. We're in northern, 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 upper west side. Um, and AAA Studios is a full service corporate event production company. And so what that means is we really do everything kind of concept to clean up. So we can help a client who's just got a really good idea or even an okay idea and help you know tease it out and work through all of the logistics, all of the strategies, all the way through you know venue sourcing, catering, AV, branding, content creation, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to the last you know sign ends up in the dumpster at the very very end. Um, and I love it. I love doing corporate events. I find it to be incredibly rewarding and fun, and I love working with a diverse array of clients um, who are all over the world and some, you know, and fully global, which is super fun. Yeah, I love that. And um, how long have you been really in the events industry since the beginning of, you know, when you started? So we officially got started in about 2011. Um, okay. I had my early day, early start was in film and television and theater. So I grew up in the film business. All of my parents are um, production people and designers. And so from the age of 13, I've been working on various theater productions or film sets in the, in the production and design capacity, right? So when my um, son was born, I really didn't want to be away from him as much as that career path takes you. So I sort of doubled down into my graphics design, artistic self, and was doing presentations for events. And I teamed up with a gentleman who was putting together actual program packages for nonprofits. And so we were working together and ended up in a very large event, which he very rapidly realized that, you know, live events was actually not for him. <laughs> and so <laughs> he went home, I stayed, I kept the clients and bought the company and we've been going strong ever since. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Love to hear that. Um, and I love when we initially met and you told me your story about your parents um, and how you kind of got started, you know, seeing them growing up in, in that environment and how it probably really encouraged you to take on those creative forces and do this thing yourself. You know, that's so neat. Um, well, I want to get into a couple of questions. So before we do really quick, um, 
I know that recently you've kind of been traveling around the world and what are some of your favorite places to travel and, and produce events? Is there one specific country or city that you just love? Well, we've been in, uh, we were in Bangkok and Lisbon and Tel Aviv this year. We're headed to Chicago on Friday, tomorrow, and um, possibly Miami towards the end of the year. So we're all over the place for sure. Um, I think, honestly, one of my favorite places to produce events is in Israel on, at the moment. But I'm looking for a challenge, you know, so. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I would love to do an event there. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So. Um, well, we have several, um, you know, questions to get to. I know the whole topic around this whole podcast today is really intentional event production, and that's very near and dear to your heart. So let's start there. What does that mean to you? And how does it differ from traditional event approaches to production? So it's really about, it's... So intention, when I mean by when I say doing events intentionally is that I want to really get to the bottom of the themes, the strategic goals, and the overall outcomes that the client is looking for. And then every choice we make moving forward from that has to be in alignment with that. So, you know, there's a lot of talk and a lot of lip service to that all over the industry, but it's, you know, we really take it to sort of the next level and we really take it very, very seriously. So it's every food choice, every branding decision, every piece of AV equipment, everything has to be in service to those strategic goals and not just to have, right? Like, <laughs> which is, you know, sometimes that's okay, but, you know, it's really has to all be pulling into one direction to create right. that space for participants. The other flip side of what I mean by that is that we really strive for ourselves, for our company, and also personally to be constantly working on our processes, on our resources, on our communication. So, we try and be very conscious and intentional with not only sticking to the, the goals and outcomes for the client, but also for ourselves, right? So, yeah. and that goes all the way to including at the very end of doing a deep debrief after every event internally, and then also with the client to yeah. do the roses and thorns, to mm -hmm. see what went well so that we can capitalize on those for next time. And then really taking a hard, you know, clear look at the things that could be done better as opportunities to really try and make it better for next time. Um, we do try to assume that there will be a next time. And, you know, with this approach, I have to say, I think it's one of the keys to why we've had clients that we've kept for 10 years, five years, you know, they tend to stick with us, which is, you know, we're honored and, and blessed for that. But I think that's part of why we really try to do that deep partnership, right? That's a little bit above just providing a service. Right. And I think a lot of event producers, you know, after the event, post event, they gather around the data points and the numbers and the stats and where everyone was coming from and who attended this session and who was over here and who was engaged. And a lot of times, you know, I love that your approach for your clients is let's have an internal meeting, just you and your team, and then you with the client as well to kind of look at the what went well, the challenges maybe, anything that might have come up. Because we know in events, there's always going to be something that happens, always whether happens. it be in person, <laughs> hybrid, or virtual. It doesn't matter which yeah. of the three, something is going to come up and happen. And I, I like how you go about that and approach that. And I, we probably will get to it as well, but just the, the component of trust between your company, yourself, and your client, that's probably why they stick around, you know? So I, I appreciate yeah. that. We really work to build that too. And it's, it's really important to us that our clients trust us. It makes, you know, it, it makes for a better work environment for everyone, but it certainly yeah. makes our jobs much easier if they trust that we have their best intentions at heart and that we are, you know, moving forward as representatives of their brand and their culture. Um, and it's just, 
it's fine tuning that too, because sometimes your clients don't know what their culture is. They don't know what their values are yet, you know, especially a startup, right? Like they're still trying to figure that out. So sometimes it's tricky, but yeah, there's always things that go a little sideways <laughs> and you don't always have control over it. You know, you have no control over AWS going down or, you know, rain out of nowhere or, you know, but you, it's how you you know take on those challenges and and how you include the client in those solutions that then builds that trust and builds that relationship and again that's very intentional right we do that on purpose because it's right. really important to us yeah and how do you balance the client's objectives you know let's say when creating a mean, meaningful and impactful experience for the attendees well i think you know having a meaningful impactful experience and something that you know they will take with them beyond the event is definitely one of your client's goals, right? Like that is definitely something that's usually very important to them. So we always build that to some degree in mind. Um, one of the things that we always try to do, no matter the event, whether it's a lunch and learn, a gala, a retreat, or a five-day annual conference, is to create a space that is safe, comfortable, where the participants can, you know, if you will, tribalize so that they feel like they are up amongst their own people, whatever that means, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, again, that's how you design the actual physical space. So that's movement, egress, what couches, what colors, what food choices, where you place the branding, how much or how little tech you use, depending on your audience. Um, and that is definitely key is knowing your participants, knowing your audience. Um, and again, sometimes you have to help your client with that. Sometimes they don't know. And sometimes they know really, really well. And you're like, that's a weird choice, but okay. <laughs> this is right. where trust has to flow both ways. <laughs> right. Yeah. Open communication, trust, you know. Um, uh, yes, I, yes. <laughs> Done that, you it know? sounds like you have a story to tell with that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, so so many to stories to pull out of the hat. Maybe we'll have a part two and we'll have just stories about event producing that we can share, you know? Oh my God, I think that would be an excellent round table of event people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already have a couple others. Well, you know, our mutual colleague um, and yeah. the person uh, that we know very well in the events industry can sit around with us and talk. A couple other people I have in mind. So I maybe that's a yeah. podcast. So, <laughs> we'll be, you know, uh, very nonchalant and cover well, names. We may ha we'll have to script it a little, I think. We don't want to yeah. get in trouble. <laughs> right? You know, and th this is in my like past history, so not like currently because uh, it's a little different. But we have some r amazing and story uh, stories to tell, and maybe that will be coming down the pipeline for any of you listening. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. um, but Erin, I wanted to ask you about, you know, strategies or techniques that you employ to ensure that events that you produce align with intended goals and values of the client. I know you just mentioned that some of your clients, they know, they know the why, they know the who, they know the how, they know all those. They know their goals, they know their intentions and all those things setting up for their event. But what does that look like in terms of strategies or techniques that, that you help to ensure that they're their events are produced and aligned correctly with, you know, your team as well. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. The, um, to some degree, it, it depends on how much or how little we're brought in and how early we're brought in. So, you know, in the best case scenario, we're brought in early and we have, um, the ability to influence things like program and we can, talk through the session choices and the speaker choices and make sure that that all of the content, you know, for the entire event is of a narrative that speaks to those end goals so that there's no weird outlier session or that they're not just a hodgepodge of things that you think you need to have because you've got this great speaker, but it's not really in alignment with, let's say, your theme is storytelling, right? Yeah. Um, and then making sure, especially the technology is in alignment with it. You can really overdo technologies, I feel like, and there's a real pressure to, you, you know, everybody has to have an app 
Well, if your audience is 50 and over or 45 and over, they don't want an app. <laughs> they yeah. want to talk to their neighbors. So you have to build in an audience. Well, it depends on the 50 and over. I take it back, right? <laughs> I don't want to alienate anybody. Um, but generally, you know, so if your audience doesn't want a lot of technology, then you have to build in time. Right. So yeah. you just you have to, again, go back to knowing who your participants are and what those goals are and then start piecing together the things that make sense all around that. Right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, you know, when we were just talking a second ago about stories and all the things, um, I know that you've told me a couple of stories, you know, about some things this year, you know, traveling to events, doing and, and producing as you do. Um, but I wanted to see if there's some sort of memorable events that you've produced. I know you said that you love producing events and going to Israel. And I think that's just super amazing. Um, exactly. Is there one memorable event specifically that you've produced that has significantly impacted, you know, you and both your client and your team? <clears throat> and how have you approached creating, like recreating that experience? I know, you know, every event is its own event and it's hard to recreate something, you know, because the next one may fall similar to the one that you're trying to recreate, but it's going to be different to some sure. capacity, you know, but I, I love hearing stories for, from people like you, event producers here out there doing this thing and uh, what you're seeing out there and what makes it memorable for you. Wow. So many things. Big question, I know. Big you question. We have, you know, me, 12, you know, 30 of these stories, but <laughs> so I want to I want to bring up two because they're they're kind of similar and it's something I don't think a lot of event producers think about, which is um in this one particular case, so this event that we did in Tel Aviv um in June. Um, it's a five-day annual meeting. It's like a showcase of all of the culmination of all of the work that this organization has been doing all year. And with, you know, right now it's very complicated in Israel, of course, politically, and, and not that it's ever not that complicated, but it's particularly right now, it's, it, it, uh, it's, it, it's having a historical moment. And we brought almost 2,000 American and European uh, Jews to this conference. There was also a, a large population of Israelis also, but we were sitting at lunch. No, no, I apologize. We were sitting at breakfast, uh, my team and I, and the catering captain for breakfast came up to us. This is a hotel person, right? He works at the hotel. He's not a part of the conference, but he had been a part of just, you know, he knew this was where the event was happening and all of these people were coming and then we were all staying in that hotel. And he came up to us and he just said how grateful he was that this conference was happening, that we were doing this conference, that it was, a, it was beautiful and that he had begun to think that the American diaspora in particular had forgotten them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm getting teary. And mm -hmm. this conference, just the fact of having it was so impactful for him. So our mm -hmm. events have an impact outside of the event itself. And I think we forget that sometimes. Yeah. And then the other story I want to share is we just finished an event for uh, an organization called Smile Train, who is an amazing organization. And this is um, a program that they've been building the last five years and we've had the privilege of being a part of that growth over these five years. It started during the pandemic and it's a community building event purely. It's about building that community and creating a space where people with facial difference can be in a room with other people with facial difference. And it was just this incredible, meaningful, powerful event. And at the end, we had a session that was basically a talk back session where we just basically had a moderator on stage who is, you know, Iva Blue is incredible and she's, she's cleft affected. And so she just opened it up. She told her own story and then she opened it up to the room. And these stories started coming from the audience of how impactful this event had been and 
all the different ways that building this community has impacted that community and how it has strengthened their confidence, resolve, resilience, and all those things, knowing that, you know, moving forward, they have this world around them. And it, it's, it's not the kind of session that often a client is brave enough to have because yeah. you don't know what people are going to say, but it was so beautiful. And we, it was only, we were only supposed to do it for about half an hour. Well, of course, you can't stop a session like that, right? <laughs> right? So, you know, people are getting emotional. The connections uh, happen. My team and I were with tissues. We were crying. Everybody was crying. There was like, it was, we were laughing. We were cheering. It was incredible. It was great. And it's the kind of session that can only happen at the, towards the end of an event because everybody has, you know, warmed to everybody. They know it's safe. And, um, it was just incredible, truly incredible. Um, and so, of course, we went long and who cares? And yeah. next year we'll add extra time to that session and things like, you know. But, yeah. So th those those are the things that I do what I do for, really. Yeah. You know, because it is it is really about building community. It is about finding your tribe and and connecting to what you you value and you believe in and then promoting that and amplifying that. And that's what the event is, is the amplification of that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the impact, you know, the, the first story that you mentioned, you know, someone who wasn't even attending your event, you know, you're having breakfast and, you know, was your, your waiter, I assume, or someone at the restaurant, um, the impact that we have that gets lost sometimes on us, you know, because we, we see attendees and attendee badges and, okay, go in this room and, you know, here's your, here's your attendee journey, <laughs> get on site. And, um, you know, the, the biggest impact, you know, for you in this scenario is you didn't realize the impact you're having on other people who were not associated with the event, who were right. seeing everyone come together. And um, the they're, ripple they're effect, like this incredible yeah. ripple effect that was happening that, because you do, you get so caught up in the schedule and the logistics and, okay, like, we've got to cover the breakout rooms and is the AV working over at the, you know, at the reception and moving the signs around and making sure that this is happening and the furniture, you get in it and you just get on the train and you start heading down the hill and yeah. it's, it was a moment of like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah we brought a lot of people here and this is a, causing a big ripple effect. And it was really, it was like, it was really lovely, really, truly. Yeah. And the unity, I'm sure that that event created as well. Um, it, it, it was impactful from someone who was just looking from the outside in and there's no greater impact for me, you know, than, than hearing stories like this of, uh, you know, production in your case and, and things that you're doing to make, um, you know, your, your clients, you know, happy and to make, um, you know, people on the outside go, Hey, that's really cool. That event that's happening. Wow. That's impacting me and I'm not even attending it. So, um, it's just re recreating that same experience, you know, going back to that whole yes. thing for, for other clients. Um, and it just happens naturally. I think that's a very organic thing. You can't really make those moments happen. They happen naturally and organically when you just have everything in place and you're doing what you're doing. Um, so those are really impactful yeah. stories. I appreciate you sharing those. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to jump uh, to AV production because that's one of the things that we talked about in our initial discussion and how we were, you know, doing our thing and throwing all the terms and all the fun things around with AV. <laughs> but, um, you've been doing this a long time. So it's not like if you saw a soundboard or monitors, you're like, what, what is this? You know, you no know way. what to do. And yeah. uh, I wanted to discuss, you know, the role of AV production and how that's played out in creating these intentional events, because with AV production, you know, you, you know, you have sound, you have lighting, you have all these things, you have fog machines, you have disco ball. I mean, all the things, <laughs> you know, uh, LED pyro. Wall. Yeah, that's right. Pyro. And I wanted to see, you know, the role of AV and how this is, you know, played out through these intentional events that you, you've been talking to us about. Yeah. Absolutely. So also a big question. Let me think about that for a second. Yeah. 
I mean, it is, you know, AV is the core of the production value, right? It's a big, yeah. big, big ticket item. And so it, it becomes the amplifying lens through which the message gets put through more than just, you know, an audio reference, right? Like it is truly the conduit through which the, the real meat of a conference or a session gets put through. So it not only does it have to work, but it has to be in service of those messages, right? So, you know, if you have like our Smile Train event, which is a community event, you don't want to have an, necessarily a giant LED wall with its yeah. bright lights, its crisp mm -hmm. edges, its, you know, its high tech. Yeah. Um, not that you, if you have it, you couldn't work with it. Of course you could, but if you have the choice, you may want something a little softer, more projection, more something that's a little bit more tactile, a little bit more analog, right? So I think that those kind of choices are important, um, but also making sure that the production value is really truly there so that you have lighting that is actually good and functioning, that you can have different looks, that you can help move the narrative along with your, with your technology. So you have content and in screens and the ability to have rests in between sessions, both for the eyes and for your ears. But you have, you can bring the lights down for a video. You can use walk on music or walk off music that's appropriate in, in levels that you can hear people and they sound warm and rich and not tinny and God forbid any screeches. <laughs> um, mm. um, that the room is lit in a way that you can see comfortably, but it's not a cafeteria or a yeah. hospital room, right? <laughs> That you, you know, all of these things speak to and, and move people to, again, going back to that tribalized idea, creating that space to get a little woo-woo for people to really begin to relax and be able to take in information and also be able to start building some of those lasting connections. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving beyond just sort of the basic setups you know, everything, depending on the conference and depending on the goals, bringing in things like touchscreens and apps and gamification and layering in all of those other pieces of engagement to sort of give the, the conference almost a third dimension, yeah. right? So that especially if you're doing hybrid or you have an online audience of any kind, then an app does become important because that's how you tie the two rooms together, rooms, right? Um, or the two audiences together, but you make it a much more of a 360 experience for everybody. Obviously, polling and, and Q&As and things like that, right? Like, those are long-standing go-tos. Um, and having, you know, proper audio for that. So if somebody does have a question or if you do set up an open mic, again, that you can hear them, that their voice is warm and that they're, you know, get the mic to them quickly, so that they don't do half their question in the dark and half their question in clear audio. You know, these are the things that make me crazy when I'm, you know, in the room and other people are like, oh, it's fine. And I'm like, no, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, it is fine, but it's not okay. Like, come on, like, let's go, let's be on it. Um, you know, all of that said, there are also different ways of getting to those goals. So it doesn't have to be a $200,000 AV bill, right? Like there are things you can do to help, you know, keep it within a budget. Um, but yeah, I think that technology and AV, it's, it's such an, they're such important tools to your audience being able to receive those messages and those strategic goals that it has to be a real conversation. And so many event people planners in particular are so intimidated by AV. They see that equipment list and they, yeah. the, you know, the people behind the curtain <laughs> and, yeah. you know, 
I was a, a IATC 600 camera assistant before I left wow. the film business. And before that, I did a lot of lighting design. So I've always been on the technical side. I've always been behind this, you know, the curtain or behind the, the camera. So I feel very comfortable in those environments. I feel very uncomfortable with those teams. And while the equipment is ever evolving, so I would never consider myself an actual AV person, like I couldn't go run an AV company, but I know how to pick really great partners and creative partners too, which is really important. Um, but yeah, it's like we were, we we're talking about doing, um, I just put in a bid for a large project during um, general session week at the UN and they want to have all this technology and like I've just discovered um, mobile LED screens that are like mobile LED signage that yeah. are super thin and they're about eight feet tall and I'm so excited because it's a, like a high-tech conference and like, all the things we can do let's do it <laughs> And the great thing about things like that is then there's no garbage, right? Like it's greener right. and then you're using electricity. I know, but I <laughs> see the chats going. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's new technology is always very exciting to me. Virtual was very exciting to me at the very beginning of the pandemic. We had already been doing hybrid, so it was an easy lean in. Um, and I still think it's just an incredible tool and powerful tool, especially for global teams yeah. when done right. Um, and it's not just, you know, hours and hours of movie because we are not TV producers. We're event producers. <laughs> You're right. Right. And V Fairs is a part of that. <laughs> yeah, sure are. Yeah. You know, I, I love the... Um concept of you know staying in touch and up to date with things that are happening because in technology especially in event tech it changes every day you know and that's across you know you know us be fierce and all the other players out there and um you know av a lot of the things change there too it's a little slower moving but still the, the technology there with you know audio with um with visuals it, it just amazes me lighting the LED screens that I, I love this. You have to use those. I mean, it, it makes sense with the like the eight foot, you know, LED, you know, mobile wall that you just talked about. It makes sense for that specific event, but it may not make sense right. for your other event, right. you know, where you right. talked about you kind of came down a little bit on production um, to focus more because it just made sense for that environment, you know, of people. They didn't need high tech. Um, right. So you kind of use that mid to lower, you know, tech to, you know, check off the goals still. And it just works for the audience. So I love that about you and the, the AV tech. And we do have some amazing partners. Um, I know Rob Allen is, you know, one of our friends. And absolutely, he, he's one of our partners here for AV at V Fairs. We love, you know, using Rob and his team. And I just talked to him a couple of weeks ago. It's just good to stay in touch with people, you know, that are, in the same umbrella, the events industry, but just a different, you know, sector and uh, to see what's going on. Cause I, I love that too. Some of my favorite people, honestly, when I go and produce an event or I'm event planning or on site somewhere, my favorite place, you will find me in the production <laughs> office. Love yeah. talking with, with AV guys and chicks and like, Hey, what, what do you do? Like, you know, tell yeah. me what you love about this job. And they all have a story. And there's some of my favorite people to be around, sound guys, Absolutely. you know, technicians, yes. whatever it may be. Because um, I, I try to, to to bring those two worlds together. Us as you know, event, you know, planners and producers, sometimes they don't super, super mesh very well with AV people. And that's not me at all. I mean, I yeah. just, I want to be all their best friends, you know, listen, they're the ones, you know, doing what they do and turning the, on the mics and all the fun things yeah. and the, the things that need to go, the green light when things are happening on stage. And um, you want to be really good friends with those people too. So <laughs> I second that. <laughs> you want to be seen and heard. You got to be nice to those guys at the very That's, least. <laughs> yeah, it, it is true. And uh, the last point I wanted to talk about a little bit, because I know this is big, you know, near and dear to your heart too, with all the different events that you do, is how do you immerse and involve diversity and inclusion and uh, accessibility? You know, that, that's a big 
thing for a lot of our customers when they're doing hybrid events in person, virtual is, you know, they want everyone to be able to participate, whether they're not able to see or hear those sorts of things. So that's really big to us here is making sure that those people have the uh, accessibility right in front of them um, and it is uh, available to them so they can participate in the event at all costs, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I mean, you know, with our overriding philosophy of creating an engaging, inviting and and um, safe space that, of mm -hmm. course, includes diversity, equity, inclusion across the board and accessibility for whatever that means. Um, like the cleft affected community, every meal needs to be served with a knife and fork and cupcakes are out. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, for other communities, it means having religious services every morning if you have a long, long event. If it's, um, you know, a, a across all of this, the, 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 the categories of things that happen when you're putting on an event, right? When your venue search, is there an elevator that goes all the way down to the floor? Is there a way of doing translation? Is there a place you can put a translation booth? Is there a way of doing closed captioning? Can you do at least a transcription, <laughs> right? Yeah. And thank God for AI in these areas, in some of these areas, right? Um, can you create a kid's room if it's a family event that has its own programming so that the kids have a place to be and the parents have a, can you know, either have a break or be able to pay attention to a session that it might not even be kid friendly, right? Um, is there a quiet space where some people who have audio um sensitivities can go and find some peace and quiet and you know have a calm down um you know nursing mothers need a private clean sanitary space that's comfortable it's again it's knowing your audience too and and who you're providing for um and of course you know the the, the three that we are not really supposed to talk about right race religion and politics making sure that all groups connected to those three biggies also feel welcomed, you know, diverse ideas, um, equitable inclusion in terms of people of color, um, you know, LGBTQ, you know, you name it. it. It can't be a tribalized, safe, engaging, you know, productive space if you have participants who don't feel welcome or that they belong, and that's key. They have to feel that they belong. Um, and so it means, you know, any posters you have of people have to be representative of the whole community. Um, language, we no longer say, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats, right? Um, it's all of these things that matter. And the more that we learn how to be kinder, gentler, more inclusive, the more I think this things like like that and and the the other accessibility technologies that that are happening are going to grow. Yeah. Does that make sense? Did I make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That does make sense. Uh, I know that's a, a big purpose, you know, for for you and your company too, um, with everyone that you work with. I mean you work with I mean, so many different companies and organizations and no two are alike. And, uh, you know, making sure that everyone has a place um, is really important, too. So I, I commend you on doing that. Um, before you. we end the episode, which I'm a little sad about, maybe we really will have to pick up a part two of this, Erin, at some point. But um, yeah. I wanted... <laughs> we'll do it. But I wanted you to let the audience know where to find you. I know where I found you. I found you on LinkedIn, but there's many other places I'm sure to find you. But please let our audience know where they can find you, learn, learn more about uh, AAA Studios. Yeah, absolutely. And please do find me. We offer a free hour consultation to anybody who wants to talk about events. I love talking about events. I'll talk about it all day long. So you may have to stop me. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me at Aaron Chapman on LinkedIn, or you can find AX3 Studios or AAA Studios on LinkedIn. Our website is ax3studios.com. Um, Instagram is really our most active social media platform. If you want to find us there, it's AX3 Studios. Um, yeah, but however you find me, please find me. And I would love, love, love to chat with your audience for sure. 
Well, good. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for being on the show. This has been a lot of fun to, to talk with and to talk through things with you. So I appreciate you being on the show today. And uh, this was our podcast release for August. Can't believe we're practically through the year. I'm stunned at some point, but I appreciate you being on the podcast this year and definitely be looking forward to part two uh, sometime in 2024. Um, and thanks to everyone who's tuning in and listening to the podcast. We so appreciate your listens and your downloads. And if you want to chat with us here at Be Fairs, we would love to hear from you. Obviously, social media, but you can also shoot us an email at sales at bfairs.com. We'll be glad to help you out there. And until the next episode, peace, love, events. Bye, everyone. Bye.